I'm Lauren Brisbane, I'm the director of Q Camel. And, you know, we run a camel dairy and, and a tourist operation and develop camel milk products. So Q Camel is a family business. The Brisbane family own and operate Q Camel. So um, my husband and I run the business. Our daughter is a public relations officer and works on the farm. Our youngest son works on their farm. And our middle son often does some of the IT work as well and some of the design work that we use in our business as well. So we all work in it and um, any other family member who gets roped in or family friend and you know as any business and then we have a great staff a pr predominantly young staff that we've trained and fostered and we run our special needs program here for people with special needs as well so we provide them a um, an opportunity to have employment where they are in a safe environment so um, and that's worked really well for us and um, you know we're used to looking after people so and they love working here because we have camels and donkeys and dogs and you know the donkeys help look after the camels as do our marama dogs. So Q Camel was Australia's first um, commercial camel dairy. So we started in 2014. So we, as I said, we're the first to pasteurise camel milk. And we do a breeding program here. We run a tourist operation. And we so we have a number of facets of our business, but we don't just produce camel milk. So we produce camel milk products. So we do yogurt, cheese, powdered milk, chocolates. Um, and now we do a skincare range, which is going into the international market. Behind me, you can see some of our mums and babies, uh, and they um, and they are part of each year. We have a crop of babies born, and then those mothers go into our milking program, and we have a breeding program here, obviously. So our mothers go through a rotational or a transitional part of their life where they have a baby and then they milk for two years and then they go back out with our bull um, in the back paddocks and then they fall pregnant again and have another baby. So that's very basically how we run our business, but we are organic and we are the only certified organic camel dairy business in the world. So in 2009, we produced a study, my husband and I funded that, um, on uh, the development of the camel industry, primarily in Queensland, and opportunities for diversification. But after we did that, we decided that if we were going to go into the camel industry, it would certainly be part of the dairy industry, because it's a health product. Growing market in Australia, we certainly were interested in organics from the word go. So when we started our dairy, we actually started producing it organically. Um, but we also, you know, the gut market is the most growing gut market and the organic market and two of the, the fastest growing markets in the world. So that's what we entered into. So it was a business decision to do that. Probably if we knew what we knew now, we probably wouldn't do it. From a financial point of view, or we would have brought more partners in with us because there are a lot of pitfalls to doing it. There's a lot of joy in doing it, but there's a lot of pitfalls in doing it. And managing an animal in a subtropical environment has certainly had its challenges. So um, we've been in and out of drought, but that's not our issue. You know, actual rain and, and flood are more of our issues, but certainly drought poses problems with, with feed. Do we love what we do? Absolutely, yeah. So are we good at what we do? I think we are. Um, and we have great results from our milk and we sell it up and down the east coast of Australia and we have a waiting um, export market in, in um, Asia. So, and we're just about to enter that. So, um, yeah, there's great things about what's happening in the business. We have fantastic tourism operation and that's growing all the time. And you know, we love that. We love having people here and finding out what we do and we're sharing that with people. So very much part of Sunshine Coast tourism and Queensland tourism. So yeah, it's an, an unusual business, but a fun one. So why camel milk? Well, that's all the health aspects. Um, there's a, a, a growing gut market and there's a lot of people who can't actually consume dairy um, because of the, uh, you know, the proteins in dairy and camel milk doesn't have that. It's also suitable for people with, who are diabetics and children with autism and so it, it, it really fits into a marketplace. Marketing that is a whole different ball game because Australia is very parochial and when we first talked about you know camel milk you know they were associated with a feral animal so we had to do an enormous amount of marketing to change people's perception of camels and that's partly why we run a tourism operation 
but they're not like cattle. They're nothing like cattle. People think they're like cattle. They're nothing like cattle. They're an ungulate and they're actually more similar to elephants. So they live in a matriarchal society and it's really important that you honour that. The minute you muck up with their society, you muck up with their general health and well-being and their emotional well-being, which is just as important as their physical health and well-being. So they're an unusual creature but they're a friendly one and they're a loving one and they're easy to manage and you don't have to be big and strong to do it so you you just use your intelligence to match theirs basically but obviously when we were becoming organic we were looking for an organic lick and supplements for our camels because even though we're on the coast and it's subtropical it's actually quite a harsh environment for a camel and the soil tends to be lacking a lot of minerals and it's quite hard to keep your breeding regime up and the health and well-being particularly of your breeding camels. So when we came across Ag Solutions and we did a lot of soil testing we found that we could match a product with what our needs were and that's made a significant difference to the health and well-being of our camels. So it's been a really good partnership and one that's worked really well within our business and helped us grow our business. So the licks completely helped in helping keeping weight on our animals, but also in their reproductive life. I mean, once we introduced it and, you know, we, and we balanced it up with it, you know, some additional calcium, etc., we found that our breeding's been really good. And you can see from the babies behind us that they're really healthy. And camels are unusual creatures. They don't have a 50-50. It depends on the weather conditions to whether they have 50% girls or 50% boys, but this year, uh, it's going to rain a lot, so we've got a lot more girls, you know, so we've got a little, you know, little heifer calf. So, but we've also found that now that we've really focused in on our nutrition and balancing up you know, those lost minerals, we've actually reduced the amount of time that they're pregnant. So, and they've got a long pregnancy or a gestation rate, it's 13 months. We found nearly all of the girls this year have had a pregnancy, a gestation of 12 months. So, and that's quite significant from a business perspective because they're basically in that dairy a lot quicker and yeah, we're not waiting around because camels can also push it out for another month and have them, if the babies aren't growing well, they'll push it out to 14 months. You know, that's a long time when you, you know, if, if, till we're waiting to milk them because we don't milk them straight away. We milk them when the baby's two months old. The baby's got to be on hard feed and be, reach all its milestones. So it's quite tricky managing that um, and you don't know when they're due because the bull mates when he mates and the girls will go into estrus when they go into estrus. So it's not necessarily right at the same time. So our process works is that our uh, females only have a baby every three years. So they milk for two years, we allow them to choose when they wean because it's important to them and some girls will stay in the dairy for full two years and others will kick their babies off at 18 months and we've had one girl who's still in here milking like a trooper when the baby was two and a half and we had to push her out of the dairy. So. But we try and keep it to that so that, and that also, also coincides with our bulls breeding time because the bulls come into rut, the girls don't come into season. So, um, yeah, so, you know, it's, um, so we try and keep that going. And you can't put a camel into calf when they're still milking. Well, we didn't think so. We had a girl do it this year. She came in, the bull got into her and um, she is pregnant and still milking, so there may be a possibility that we can actually have a little bit more control over our breeding process, but you've got to know what you're doing. It's a big drain on their body, you know, feeding a baby and pregnant and still keeping their health and well-being and providing you with milk, so, you know, it, there, there's a lot of work in that. Camels are very much like elephants, so they live in a matriarchal society of grandmothers, mothers, daughters, and that's a complete fabric of their life. So they have babies together, the, the older camels teach the younger camels, and they, if we have a camel, the new mum who's struggling with it, you know, being a new mum, we put her in with a mum who's been doing it for ages and they can teach them, you know, what to do. And, you know, the girls, there's a couple of young pregnant mums behind us, they've never had babies. so. These, and a couple of these girls have had a few babies, so they teach them how to prep, prep their body for, you know, and you can see them out in the paddock prepping their body and getting ready, and they, you know, and they spend a lot of time with them. If they have trouble feeding, they help feed the baby to help them, and they encourage them how to stand, to stand, because it, it's like any mother, it feels funny when they're feeding, so some mums have a real struggle with that for the first few days or week, so they come and encourage them and just help them relax, and, or they'll help feed the baby so that they can just settle into it. So that's important, that community's 
incredibly important to their health and well-being as it is to most mammals, you know, so where they're pretty much like people. They have their likes and dislikes and people they love and people they don't like. you just got to work with it, really. So we have a no slaughter policy here. That's really important to Camel. So we don't, um, so if a girl gets too old, she stays in the paddock as a grandmother. Um, our boys are rehomed. So we've, um, our current bull, we actually bred ourselves and then we put him out west for a couple of years to grow out. And then he, but he was also trained by a, a very good bull on how to be a good bull and gentle and kind. Um, and that's really important. You want a bull that's actually, when they mate, they're very gentle um, because, you could, because they're such big creatures. You know, when they're out in the wild, they actually knock girls over and break their legs and do terrible things to them. And our bull, is, he's quiet and gentle. And even when he's in rut, um, we can walk up to him and do anything with him. He would never harm us. But that, you can't say that about male camels, you cannot. So, um, and our little boys are rehomed, so they go for land management purposes, they go to other people's properties to help them with land management and also to help eat weeds or just as companion animals. So there's a purpose and we get paid way more for our boys, so we don't care whether we have boys or girls, it doesn't matter to us. Um, and because of, the bulls are tend to be really sooky and loving, so they love a kiss and a cuddle. But they integrate really well into people's properties as companion animals and weed eaters and co-graze with cattle. So they have a really good purpose in their life. I mean, I could walk up to any of these camels and put my rest my head on their backside, right? Because that's how we train them. We spend a lot of time around their back end, you know, because of the girls, we've got to check them and there's a lot of prenatal and postnatal care that's done. And the same with the boys, we spend a lot of time on their back end so that they're used to you know, you're spending that time so they, they don't kick and bite. And you don't do anything about it other than changing your octave level in your voice so that they understand that kicking and biting is not something that's done here. It's love. You know, if you treat an animal with love and kindness, that's exactly what they give you back. They don't know any different. All of our camels know nothing else but love. So, and it's pretty easy to integrate an animal into the same sort of sphere, the same sort of property where people treat them the same way. So we vet everybody. You know, they have to be kind and gentle and that's what they go into. So, and they're kind and gentle. Okay, the camel's hump is filled with fat. It's actually a tallow. It's a fabulous product in itself. Particularly when the girls are pregnant, they actually get quite a big hump on them and they use that because, you know, in the wild, they would barely eat and they would just feed and feed and feed, you know, for six weeks or so and then before they bring the, you know, the baby back into the herd. So, um, you know, that's actually quite important. Yeah, yeah, so keeping a hump. But some girls lose their hump when they're feeding and then they get a big hump when they're pregnant. You know, you've just got to understand the animal. But they don't have hooves, they have feet. And so their feet are actually padded and their spread and their pressure is one third of what cattle is. So pounds per pressure is a third of cattle. So they actually protect the environment and the land and they actually compress it down and actually stop soil erosion. So their feet are amazing. And so generally, if they tread on you, you barely feel it. Feet don't do any damage at all. So not like cattle or goats or you know other, uh, other animals with hooves, they're fabulous. Their anatomically camels are amazing in themselves. They actually originated in the snow and they're transferred into the desert, so and they're equally as comfortable in the snow or the desert. And they like to swim. Camels love water. And you can put them out in a, and let them go for a swim. I'd love to have somewhere where they could have a really big swim. So, of course, they love mud. They like to roll in mud as well. But um, their, bodies, their bodies are amazing. They thermoregulate, so when they get too hot, they sit down, thermoregulate and cool their body down. They use their pedestal to actually create an airflow around their body, so or they hunker down and huddle up when they need to share um, body temperature when they're in 10 below, you know, or 20 below, you know. But they can be, they manage their body in 60 degrees or 20 degrees below. They're in the camels, they're, they're an amazing creature, and they have wool and hair. So in summertime, they lose all their wool, and they've just got hair and then in winter time they wool up and then that comes off naturally and we help pull it off so they're more comfortable and then you know people use that to spin it and the babies keep their wool for about 18 months. Adult camels have got to eat 15 kilos of feed a day yeah so um so a hand feed is quite significant of course and then they go out and graze 
but they can change that. They can actually change what they need and regulate their body so they don't need as much. They need, and certainly they would eat that in the rain because we lose yield in the rain and they, because they shiver, they've got wool and they shiver. So they, we go through a lot. We wouldn't necessarily go through as much in our, because we've got a balance here with the, you know, with the, the native vegetation. Um, but generally that's how much protein they need a day and how much feed they need, 15 kilos of feed a day. This year we developed a skincare range. It was a development process that was in R&D for five years. So we didn't just give our camel milk to a cosmetic chemist and say, here, make us up a range. There was a lot of work that went into what the ingredients would be. It had to all be about health and skin health. We've chosen a really high-end essential oil range that actually matches with the camel milk really, really well. Using fresh milk in a, um, a skincare range, the milk has to produce a therapeutic goods administration level. That means that they, um, the plate count has to be less than 100. Now, we aren't aware of any other company that can do that and do it at a commercial base, on a commercial basis that we do it, which is incredibly difficult to do. And all the ingredients have all got to be at a therapeutic goods administration level. So it's incredibly difficult to do, but it's worked beautifully. We're really proud of the range we've got. And we've, you know, we're also doing something that we can actually market into that Asia Pacific region, which is 51% of the global skincare market. So that's really where our aim is. We've combined it with Australian native botanicals and had to have very Australian edge on it. And those botanicals, have their, they heal the skin in their own right. So mixing that with the camel milk and the essential oils and the botanicals has been a real winner. Our milk is sold up and down the east coast of Australia and can be um, purchased on a retail basis. Our skincare at the moment, um, we've got a couple of retail outlets, but generally you can buy it online. Uh, and, and, and certainly coming to visit the farm, you can, you can book a tour. You know, we have tours, public tours on, and then we have group tours. We do group visits all the time, and you can book that through our website or directly with QCamel. We've got a great website, so it's pretty easy to find, qcamel.com.au, and, um, and, and have a look and see what we have on offer.